jumps up and hit me and spin. West Virginia, a place of incredible mountains, beautiful rivers, and a housing crisis that has ravaged the state for decades. Now how is it that you have the Greenbrier Hotel practice field for the New Orleans Saints in extreme poverty mere minutes away from one another? This is the reality of Central Appalachia. Crumbling homes, lack of infrastructure, and a lack of attention from mainstream media are a staple in most of these small towns. According to the Appalachian Regional Commission, Central Appalachia is made up of Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Virginia. This is right in the middle of America's coal country, where this cycle of poverty began. In the early 1900s, coal companies began to take full advantage of the plentiful resources and eager workforce found in Central Appalachia. Unfortunately for the people of Central Appalachia, no one then fully understood the repercussions of working in the mines. Horrific accidents and severe illness brought some out of the mines, but for those still there, the wages weren't nearly enough to take care of electric bills, medical bills, and the cost of living. Coal companies often had little regard for their workers' well-being, especially in this time period. If one got hurt, there would be ten more applying, simply because there weren't any other jobs available in the area. Thus began the dependency on these coal companies. As time went on, resources were becoming depleted and companies started pulling out, again, without much regard for their employees. With coal largely gone and few other employment opportunities for those well enough to work, the cycle of poverty began in central Appalachia. For the unemployed, there were very few chances nearby to work, and for those who were sick or injured, even fewer. Making ends meet became the number one priority for these families, not working on their homes that were simply falling apart and causing even more complex health issues. The far-reaching lack of opportunity has crippled Central Appalachia, often acting as quicksand, trapping those in it and forcing them to stay. Nope, 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 stop. Reverend Dr. Walter Crouch, CEO and President of Appalachia Service Project says, when people are struggling to make their budgets meet, the first thing they usually cut out is home repair. Eventually, this catches up with them, because if you have a leaky roof, then all of a the sudden the repairs become, instead of just fixing a leak on the roof, you're fixing a crumbling foundation. That's why we see a substandard housing problem all over central Appalachia. The HUD defines a cost burden individual as someone who pays 30% or more of their income on housing and struggles to pay for other necessities, such as food, medical bills, and electricity. In McCreary County, Kentucky, 30.8% of homeowners are considered cost burdened in a county that has a 37.8 poverty rate. Luckily for McCreary County and about 30 other counties in central Appalachia, Appalachia Service Project, ASP, is hard at work trying to eradicate substandard housing. ASP was founded in 1969 in Barberville, Kentucky by Methodist preacher Glenn Tex Evans. His idea was to involve youth in direct service to the people of Central Appalachia by making homes warmer, safer, and drier. Today, ASP is headquartered in Johnson City, Tennessee, and serves across 28 counties in five different states. This includes three year-round centers in Jonesville, Virginia, Guyon Valley, West Virginia, and Raynell, West Virginia. ASP also started a disaster relief program to help recovery from the 2016 flood in Raynell, West Virginia, and wildfires in Sevier County, Tennessee. For 50 years, ASP has inspired hope in the people of Central Appalachia by providing free home repair to families in need. ASP has two main programs, Year Round, which is more adult-oriented, and their Summer Program, which is youth-oriented. Summer centers are staffed by four to six college students to take care of volunteer and community relations, select homes, budget, and organize volunteers. This summer, I spent time in Nicholas County, West Virginia, and McCreary County, Kentucky. Each home that ASP works on has a code name to protect the privacy of the homeowners. In Nicholas County, West Virginia, I worked on a home called Chicken Run. 
in Mercury County, Kentucky, I worked on a home called Rise Up. At Chicken Run, we were providing a room addition for one of the daughters that lived in the home. This involved framing walls, attaching sheathing, underpinning, and starting the new shed-style roof. The family that we worked with was recently displaced due to the large amount of flooding from the 2016 West Virginia flood that killed nearly 30 individuals. This displacement resulted in them living in a smaller trailer where the family could not live together under the policies from Child Protective Services due to the varying ages of the children. This room addition brought a family back together after natural disaster forced them apart. While working on the family's home, we got to interact with all members and animals that were on the site at various times in the week. We even had the opportunity to let one of the children take part in building the room addition. <laughs> We love our kids, and we try to take care of them, and we do meet the very basic needs, but there's only so much we can do. This quote from a homeowner in Nicholas County exemplifies why organizations like ASP are so important. By helping families rebuild or repair their homes, they are able to focus on providing in other areas to their families. In McCurry County, Kentucky, we took a long and winding road to our work site every day. Hidden amidst the beauty of Kentucky's Cumberland Falls State Park was a family crying out for help. The homeowners, a husband and wife, had been reaching out to nonprofit housing organizations in the area for years before stumbling across ASP. The father at Rise Up, a disabled veteran, the mother, a part-time public school employee, and their 16-year-old son were living in a dilapidated trailer unsuitable for anyone to live in. When ASP started work on this home, they performed a hug, building what is in essence a cocoon around the old home by making new walls and a new roof. When all was said and done, ASP was able to give this family new walls, new insulation, vinyl siding, a tin roof, and new flooring throughout the home. After resorting to using an outdated space heater, the mother of the home was thrilled that she would have a warm house during the winter. Quote, it got so bad last winter that our shampoo froze. Now, I won't have to worry about that." End quote. While we were at Rise Up, our homeowners told us about the plans that they had for their future now that they had a safe place to live in. Looking for new jobs, spending more time with their son, and planting a garden in front of their home, to name a few. In Abraham Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, he states that the needs at the bottom of the pyramid must be met for an individual to move up the hierarchy. Physiological needs, including warmth and rest, are at the very bottom of the pyramid, representing their vitality to human life. Families that are touched by ASP's ministries are given much more than just a warm, safe, and dry place to live. They have a new lease on life and become inspired to live out whatever passions they may have. Hi, my name is Kathleen Hopkins. I'm from Wayne, New Jersey. Um, I'm 21 years old. I just graduated from college from Georgetown University um, with a degree in math, and I'm on ASP staff. This is my third year on staff. My specific role as a center director um, is kind of it's very spread out. It's a lot of managing. So um, my staff is a four-person staff, and so we have three other staffers who they each have their own specific roles um, in terms of controlling finances, controlling food, controlling um, volunteer things, but my job is a lot of managing that and making sure that everything's running smoothly. Uh, there's normally four or five staffers who run the center and that means they run um, programming for volunteers, so making sure there's food for breakfast and dinner and then food to, for them to prepare for their own lunch. Um, there's different evening programming every night, so we have um, one night we had like an individual discussion with your small groups um, type thing that was a little bit reflective. Um, one night we have a culture night where um, a local bluegrass kind of band um, comes in and plays music for us. One night we have a picnic where all of our families that were whose homes we're working on get invited to this picnic and we have like a nice cookout and everything. That's really fun. Um, so that's something that the staff does and then throughout the day we have to go and check on all the projects that are happening and answer any questions and things like that. 
For me, the challenging part is seeing how much need there might be and how many applications we have and only being able to work on maximum 15 homes in a summer. I mean, my staff worked on 13 this past summer, 13 different families, and that was um, that's a pretty normal amount. Meanwhile, we have an application binder that is full of applications. So choosing the homes that we work on in the summer, as I was kind of talking about, is um, it's difficult and it's a process. When we first get to the county, um, in the beginning of the summer, we have one week where we have to look through the applications that we have um, and go visit the homes for things that are, we call initial home visits. And so that means that we go to a home, um, we kind of ask the homeowner, okay, on your application I see you have listed that you need these kinds of repairs. Would you mind showing me um, what these things are? We just take a look around their entire home. We also look for projects that maybe could be the cause of some of the repairs that are needed. So if all the floors are rotted out, um, we have to look at the roof, you know, and see maybe the roof's leaking really badly and that's why other things getting rotted. Um, so we look at things like that, we take some photos, and then we come back um, to the entire staff. We can talk about if we think this is a good project for us to work on, if we see um, that it could last like one week or multiple weeks, if volunteers could do that kind of project, because if it's very complicated things like electrical or plumbing that take um, a lot of like high skill, and knowledge then that it's not really good for our high school youth volunteers. So we have to look at all those things and we have a form that we fill out that helps us kind of rank it. Sometimes there's ones you're like, oh, this could be one week project, but in general we try to look for things that are a few weeks just because um, that's easier with volunteers in case it doesn't last the entire week or it lasts a little bit over a week. So it's hard to decide um, which homes we can work on, which we can't, it's, yeah, it's tough. If I could share one thing about Central Appalachia, I'm going to kind of cheat and say two things, I guess, but the first part is just that um, many people don't really know exactly how much poverty there is here. These communities are here that are in need, um, and there are no jobs in a lot of these places. The industries that used to be really big, like coal or even like logging, things like that, are not as big anymore, and so it's really, really difficult for people to find jobs being like lazy or not hardworking or whatever um, and that's not why people are in poverty um, it's a big cycle that's really hard to break if you're born into it love the organization I mean I've been working for ASP for three years I've been involved for like seven or eight years I think at this point um, and I hope to be involved for a long long time just because it's something that I think um, is very unique in the way that it approaches doing some kind of home repair. Um, it gives everything for free, uh, which I think is awesome. And it has no minimum like income requirement or nothing that disqualifies you unless it's an unsafe situation for volunteers. So I really like that approach. And lessons that I've learned through ASP, I guess is just um, an ASP motto, but um, from our founder, Tex Evans, it's accept people um, right where they are, just the way they are. And I think that's something that we all ought to live by.
ISP's ministry revolves around a particular quote from founder Tex Evans. We accept people right where they are, just the way they are. This still rings true as the organization has just finished its 50th summer of service, as ASP has mindfully expanded its outreach to help more and more people in central Appalachia with each passing summer. Substandard housing is not an issue that will go away overnight, but because of organizations like ASP, families like the ones I had the chance to serve this summer can live in warm, safe, and dry homes at no cost to them. ASP's ministry allows homeowners the opportunity to live their lives free of worry in regard to the state of their home. For more information about the Ministry of Appalachia Service Project or to apply for help, please visit www.asphome.org. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello.